On October 6, 2019, Tommy Lee Jenkins took the initial steps on what would be a life-changing journey to meet his love, Kylie. The two had met online a few days earlier, but Tommy was so sure with this new relationship, he asked his lady love to move in with him, and she accepted. There were just a few problems. Number one, Tommy was in Whitestown, Indiana, while his girlfriend was three states away in Nina, Wisconsin. Number two, Tommy lived with his mom. He had no money and no car. He didn't even have a bicycle. Three, and this is the most important, Tommy was 32 years old and Kylie was 14. To further complicate things, Kylie wasn't Kylie at all. She was an undercover deputy with the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force and Tommy's journey of an estimated 702,000 steps would take him 351 miles through three states, through multiple counties, and would lead him directly to prison. A man facing federal charges after investigators say that he walked from Indiana to Wisconsin thinking he would have sex with a 14 year old girl. Tommy Lee Jenkins had already been convicted of sex crimes involving children and was under investigation again when prosecutors say he unknowingly crossed paths with an, with an undercover investigator online. Investigators knew his face. Tommy Lee Jenkins' first conviction on child sex charges was in 2011. Now he's charged in a new investigation. Documents show Jenkins used Facebook to communicate with someone he thought was 14. Jenkins allegedly told the undercover he planned to walk nearly 400 miles from Whitestown, Indiana to Nina, Wisconsin to meet for sex. This should be a simple, feel-good story about the police trapping a dangerous predator in their snare. The problem is, Tommy should have never been on the streets in the first place. Because just one month prior to taking this walk, Tommy had walked away from kidnapping charges after abducting his roommate's children. Why was Tommy freed after that arrest? The DA has remained tight-lipped and no satisfactory answer has ever been provided. My own research about the case led me to the parents of those two children, the last known actual victims of Tommy Lee Jenkins kidnapped that cold night in September 2019. 32-year-old Tommy Lee Jenkins was found at a storage unit just outside Oshkosh in September. With him were two kids who were naked. But before we go there, let's head to 2011 when Jenkins would face his first real trouble with the law. Back in 2011, then 24-year-old Tommy was arrested in Nina, Wisconsin for sexually abusing two young brothers, aged seven and eight. He was charged with two counts of repeated sexual assault of the same child, charges that could and should have led to decades in prison. Instead, Jenkins would plead no contest to a reduced charge of four counts of child abuse, and he also admitted to plying the children with alcohol. Jenkins was sentenced to just four years of probation and a one-year suspended jail sentence. According to court records, the charges were reduced due to Jenkins' history of developmental disorders, intelligence deficits, and other physical and mental health disorders. He was not required to register as a sex offender, leaving him free to commit further crimes and commit them he would. During its sentencing hearing on federal charges, the government described numerous incidents in the eight years following that conviction where Jenkins was alleged to have sexually abused additional minors. But for some reason, Tommy remained free. That is, until the events of September 2019. What had Tommy gotten up to? To answer that, 
we need to head 15 miles south of Nina down Interstate 41 to the city of Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Squeezed between Lake Winnebago and Lake Butte des Moines lies Oshkosh, Wisconsin. When you learn that Winnebago is Algonquin for stinking water, while Butte des Moines means mound of the dead, you might be puzzled why any man with common sense and a sense of smell would choose to settle here. On a rain-soaked September morning in the fall of 2019, single mother Melina took a prescription sleeping pill and turned in for the night. She was seven months pregnant, had two young children running about, and was in the middle of planning a move away from Oshkosh to be closer to her aging parents. After her long day, she desperately needed rest and took solace in knowing that her roommate and part-time babysitter was sleeping in his own room not far away should he be needed. That roommate's name? Tommy Lee Jenkins. Melina says she had no idea about Tommy's previous arrest history. He was not on the registry, and since the crime had happened miles away and almost a decade earlier, it wasn't something known to local townspeople. When Melina awoke in the middle of the night, she faced every parent's worst nightmare. Her children were missing, and so was Tommy. News show Jenkins was found outside a storage shed just outside of Oshkosh without a shirt. Inside one of the unit's two kids, ages two and nine, both naked, huddled on the concrete floor and wrapped in a wet blanket. The investigation revealed Jenkins lived with the boy and girl and their mom and eventually admitted to taking them late at night without her permission. Jenkins told investigators he took their clothes off to prevent hypothermia because it was raining. The weather apparently complicated his first plan. A nearby waterlogged tent was found, according to investigators, with clothes, diapers, a BB gun, and a jar labeled moonshine. The documents indicate Jenkins was previously investigated for giving alcohol to children and sexually assaulting them. Tommy had been charged with providing children alcohol back in 2011, so the presence of it in 2019 around his abductees should have been a major red flag. He was charged with child abduction and disorderly conduct. Days later, a child sexual assault charge will be added. But somehow, after just a few weeks in jail, charges were dropped and Tommy Lee Jenkins was set free. There would be consequences for the kidnapping though, just not for Tommy. In a stunning reversal, Melina had her children taken away by Child Protective Services and placed in the sole custody of their father. The parents were never interviewed by the media. This is their first time sharing their story. First off, were Tommy Lee Jenkins and Melina dating? Oh, we weren't dating. No. In the interrogation footage, Tommy admits there was no relationship. She lived with him because she needed a roommate. She didn't know his history or any of that. That was the unfortunate part is she just didn't know the history and she thought everything would be all right. What did Melina do when she realized her girls were gone? She woke up normally having our youngest daughter sleeping right next to her. And then she gets up and she looks in our oldest daughter's room, notices they're both missing. So I was like seven months pregnant with one of my daughters and me and my best friend went outside to go look for him. By that time, the police had already found uh, the girls. Tommy was arrested and locked up. Weeks later, he was in a new state and Melina had lost access to her kids. What happened there? They took my kids away. They're blaming me. They're trying to get me for neglect. I want to get my kids back and they're not helping me. CPS is like saying it's my fault, my fault. But how is it my fault? I'm not allowed to sleep. And what about the father? So full of doubt early on. I knew there was just something off the bottom only now to see his worst fears confirmed. What would he say to the DA that let Tommy go after the kidnapping? What in the heck were you thinking? I don't know if prison's necessarily the right spot, but at least a mental facility for the rest of his life. At any rate, within days of his release from jail, Tommy moved to Whitestown, Indiana a town with a population of just over 4,000. 
and a world away from the trouble he left behind. Little did Tommy know that trouble would soon come looking for him in his new home. Whitestown, Indiana. Not too far to the north or south, or to the east or west. Indiana is in the middle. No one moves to Indiana in search of adventure. Those who listened at the knee of their granddad learned wisdom, that there's comfort, safety, and contentment in belonging to the middle. Smack dab in the middle of the Hoosier State is Boone County, and in the very center of Boone County is Whitestown. On October 1st, 2019, a deputy working with the Internet Crimes Against Children's Task Force created a Facebook profile, posing as a 14-year-old girl from Nina, Wisconsin, named Kylie Marie. If Nina, Wisconsin sounds familiar, it should, because eight years earlier, Tommy was arrested there for assaulting those two young brothers. The officer, who knew Jenkins from his time in the Winnebago County Jail, sent the 32-year-old a friend request. The ploy worked, and Tommy accepted the friend request. His Facebook page was full of two children, ages two and nine, that he referred to as his stepchildren. In reality, they were the two children he had kidnapped a month earlier. He was flaunting them. The two struck up a conversation that quickly turned sexual. We will have sex as soon as you get here, and you will not want to stop at all. You will not have no clothes on. I will need a shower before we have intercourse. Do I get to play down by your vagina when I get there? I want to have 500 kids with you starting in the next year. Kylie was honest about her age, asking Jenkins, Do you care I'm 14 and drink? Jenkins reply, Yeah, at your age I was 15 when I got my first DUI. Jenkins badly wanted to meet the 14-year-old, telling her, If I had the money... I would put you on a bus and show you how a dad should be to you. When Kylie admitted that she had had sex previously, Tommy jealously demanded to know, Which port did he put it onto? I want more pictures, but with no shirt, no pants. On October 6th, five days after their correspondence began, Tommy asked Kylie, Would you like me to come up to Wisconsin and get you? She said yes, and he started walking. The arduous trek took him through Indianapolis, along the shore of Lake Michigan, and up through Chicago. While the media was quick to label him as the predator who walked 351 miles to meet a child, he actually walked a much shorter distance. It was noted in court documents he had a bus ticket for one part of the journey and was given a ride by a kindly church member during another leg. Along the way, he updated Kylie on his progress, sending pictures of exit signs and local landmarks. On October 10th, four days after setting off, Jenkins arrived in Nina, Wisconsin, the very place his troubles with the law began back in 2011. Once again, he was arrested. He was charged with a single count of using a computer to attempt to persuade, induce, or entice a minor to engage in unlawful sexual activity. He was looking at 10 years to life in prison if convicted. During his walk, Tommy crossed several state lines, making his crime federal. During his sentencing hearing on federal charges, the government described numerous incidents in the eight year following that conviction where Jenkins was alleged to have sexually abused additional minors. Judge William Griesbach pointed out the serious nature of the charges and the need to deter Jenkins and others from abusing children in the future. It sounded like they were going to make an example of Jenkins, and with sentencing guidelines ranging from 10 years to life in prison, Tommy expected to be locked away for decades. Instead, another plea deal was reached, and Tommy will serve just 10 years behind bars the mandatory minimum sentence for the crime in Wisconsin. He will also spend life on supervised probation and be required to register as a sex offender, but it hardly seems like a fitting sentence for the number of crimes committed. For comparison, you could get 20 years in a Texas prison if you're caught with five pounds of marijuana. I have a few questions about this case because things don't add up. 
First, why were those kidnapping charges dropped in September? Multiple news sources tried getting answers from the DA, but they were each stonewalled. Records show he was released from jail in Winnebago County, but the big question is, why? Because there's no explanation in the records that we found. Despite all of this, the charges were dropped. We've reached out to the district attorney's office to find out why, but have not heard back. So Matt, do we know why charges weren't filed in Winnebago County for that September arrest? No, we don't. We reached out to the district attorney's office today and have not heard back. My next question, who was watching Tommy while he traveled three states to meet a teenager? Was there a backup plan should he assault a different child on his way to Nina? A lot could have gone wrong here, and who would have taken responsibility for that? A small town police department several states away? It doesn't seem likely. My final question. Why is Tommy getting special treatment instead of actual treatment for mental disability? Jenkins has been evaluated, and he has an IQ of 67, while the average IQ is between 98 to 100. This classifies Tommy as intellectually disabled. Further evidence can be found in letters written by Jenkins to the court. Keep in mind, these were written when he was 32 years old. I have a dream to own a fishing store one day. I've had a lot of jobs over the years. A lot of people show me how to make money. I hope you can help me make my dream come to life. I know my mom and dad miss me a lot. They lost my younger brother for good and will not see him before God take him home. Please help them get me home to them for good. Thank you, Tommy Jenkins. Intellectual disability or not, the 10 year sentence is a joke and the punishment in no way fits the crime. The court would also make a recommendation to the Bureau of Prisons asking that Tommy be placed at a facility that can address significant cognitive and mental health issues. That prison does not exist, and that help will not be there. A decade behind bars will not improve Tommy's mental health because he still doesn't understand the magnitude of his crimes. Just five months into his current 10-year sentence, Jenkins has already petitioned the court to be taken off of lifetime supervision because he doesn't see himself as a danger. The motion was quickly denied. So yes, a bad guy was taken off the streets and Wisconsin can breathe a little easier. It's just too bad this law enforcement win was only made possible by so many failures within the Wisconsin court system. Tommy Lee Jenkins needs help. He needs years of therapy and he needs 24 hour care for the rest of his life to ensure he is never a threat to children again. What he doesn't need are any more chances. He used the last of those when he began that journey of 351 miles, destination Winnebago County, Wisconsin to the waiting arms of law enforcement. There is an update on this case. When I interviewed the parents of the kidnapping victims, it was back in July of 2020. Before completing this video, I reached out in May 2021 to see if Melina had her rights restored. Instead, I learned both parents have lost their parental rights and the children are in foster care while they battle to regain custody. Somehow, Everyone involved with that 2019 kidnapping is dealing with traumatic loss and horrific life changes. Except for the kidnapper himself who got away without a single charge. <laughs>